Hey guys, welcome to today's baby sleep tip video. I am so stoked to have you here and today's topic is soothes. This can be a bit of a controversial one I find because a lot of people are either super pro or super against soothes. However, let's look at what's going on for the science of the body and also what's best for your baby. So, soothers, pacifiers, dummies, whatever you want to call them, they are a sucking device that can be a fantastic tool. They can be really helpful, especially in that newborn stage, as they learn that breathe, suck, swallow sequence. When they're a newborn, they're trying to work out that sequence, so it can be a really helpful tool. In a lot of ultrasounds, you will see a baby sucking on their hands or their, their fist, something like that. Sucking is a very natural reflex for a newborn. This can be a very, very great tool for a baby who needs some calming as a little one. However, is it our long-term tool? Not necessarily. See, here's what happens, is that when baby goes into deep sleep, so this is our body sleep, their breathing slows and their body gets limp. When their body gets limp, their sucking reflex also goes limp. So we end up with this limp sucking reflex and then the soother falls out. Off it goes. In the next cycle of sleep, which you're gonna hit at around 20 minutes, in 30 minutes in depending on the baby and how long we've been asleep um, you're going to hit REM sleep that's our rapid eye movement sleep and this is an active stage of sleep and because it's an active stage of sleep this is where we have as an older baby we have partial paralysis so we don't act out our dreams as an adult but we end up with the sucking reflex reactivating as a baby gets older so past that four month point if they are relying on that to fall asleep, then what can happen is that that sucking reflex reactivates and they're like, oh my goodness, I need that to get back to sleep. But they have to fully wake up to actually reactivate, like to start that sucking process and then that soothing process again. So then it can break up sleep and it can cause more night makings, a harder time to get to sleep and those 20 to 30 minute naps. So. Is it a good tool? Absolutely. My first, we used it only on car rides or when she was sleeping in public or like we were on the go. Worked fantastic. My second, she loved her soother, loved it. Until at the four month regression, it became a problem where we were putting in the soother every time. And I noticed this after a day or two that she suddenly became more intensely attached to it. And I thought, mm, yeah, okay, this is the time where we're actually done with the soother. We're done. Because at around that four month stage, that six month stage, it is so much easier to remove the soother if they're having a problem with it than when they are older. That totally can be done. If you are struggling and the soother is an issue when your baby is older, then absolutely, let's chat. We can totally help with that. But what it comes down to is that because that sucking reflex is relying on that soother when they fall asleep, every time they wake up or transition sleep cycles, then they need that sucking motion again. So what are my tips when it comes to this? First of all, let's use the, use the soother strategically. Let's not use it all the time when they're a newborn or a baby. So if they're awake and they're a baby, then they don't need it. Okay, if they need some regulation and they're really struggling, you are there for them. Then, as a bit as a newborn, if we can use some other things in combination with it, then it is not the 100% reliant thing that they have. We talk through more newborn strategies and nurturing newborns. And if your baby is an older baby and is relying on that soother, then we can do this in Sleep Sleep Baby. However, what I would do is start with that awake time and put it in a visual spot where baby can see it at the end of sleep time, that's where it goes, so that they know that they're not having it during awake time. Then, during sleep time, we're going to make sure that we are comforting in other ways, engage with them so that it is not just about the soother, so that when we transition it out, we're all good. If you want more baby sleep tips, make sure you subscribe because we will be doing this for the next 60 days. 
Have people in your life been telling you, you'll never sleep again? Are you starting to stress about how life is going to change with a baby or adding an additional baby? I've been there. And mama, it's time to cheers your new best friend, Little Wink Sleep. Our nurturing newborns program gently and gradually lays the foundation for sleep in a way that you're able to manage and understand. We use a science-based approach that fosters healthy attachment. You'll be able to let go of the stress of newborn sleep and enjoy this stage, knowing your baby is set up with the right skills. Nurturing newborn sleep includes all our insider coaching strategies, taking you step-by-step, troubleshooting along the way, as well as